Marilyn Monroe was one of the most beautiful and iconic actresses of all time. But do you know why she always looks so good? In this video, I'm going to show you the toxic history of Johnson's baby powder and how Marilyn used it as a dry shampoo. Hello lovelies, my name is Laura and I'm sure you've heard of Johnson's baby powder, but what you may not know is that it has a dark and toxic history dating back to the early 20th century. In this video, I'm going to take you on a journey through time and show you how this popular product has been connected to some of the biggest names in Hollywood. And now a word from our sponsor. So thank you Huge Tomato for sponsoring this post. Huge Tomato understand how important it is to find and invest in high quality, authentic pearl jewelry. That's why they always offer customers exceptional quality at an affordable price. And I love everything that I got. I got the cutest pearl necklace with this darling little cat on it. And I love how dainty and gentle it is. And then I also got these really cute cameo earrings that I love. And they definitely remind me of Marie Antoinette or something very Baroque. And then I got three different earrings and one pair is a crystal ball style earring and then a classic pearl earring. And then I got these really cute heart pearl ones that I'm wearing as well as these round pearl earrings with these little mini pearls all around them and I just love all of the designs that I got and I love how vintage they look and very romantic. They definitely have a Bridgerton vibe to them and just remind me of Marie Antoinette and Versailles. And they just feel very Baroque and glamorous and the quality is really good. I love the cute boxes they came in as well. Huge Tomato began in 2017 with a young and passionate team of pearl jewelry designers and craftsmen specializing in high quality freshwater pearls and accessories. The team at Huge Tomato now consists of 30 people who each share a love for natural pearl jewelry. Unlike many brands and businesses online, Huge Tomato has forged a close relationship with pearl farms in Japan, Australia, and across the beautiful islands of Polynesia. This gives Huge Tomato the unique opportunity to design, produce, and sell intricate pearl earrings, eye-catching pearl necklaces, and a valuable freshwater pearl jewelry that make gorgeous and sentimental gifts. So if you're searching for high quality, handmade and bespoke jewelry that carries significant meaning such as pearls or gemstones, you've come to the right place. Pearls symbolize wisdom, beauty, and innocence and have been used throughout the world as gifts and worn to celebrate special occasions. Pearl necklaces are an elegant jewelry choice for brides and pearl earrings are frequently used as family heirlooms. So make sure you use my promo code LAURA35 to get 35% off. All right, now let's jump back into the video. Oh, wreck. You are a wreck. Why are you so uptight this morning? Oh, I've got my interview today. Where are my eyelashes? You'll feel a lot cooler if you're just using Johnson's baby powder. Why did I cut my hair? I look like a squirrel. Who am I? I have no idea. But you'll feel a lot better if you just use some baby powder. If it's going to be one of those days when you need to keep a little cooler, a little drier, and a lot more comfortable. It is pure Johnson's baby powder. <gasps> my baby powder. I need that today. Marilyn Monroe was one of the most famous actresses of the 20th century. She was known for her glamour and sex appeal, and her films were some of the most popular of the era. Monroe was born in 1926 in Los Angeles, and she began her career as a model and actress in the 1940s. Her breakout role came in the film Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, and she went on to star in a number of other successful films, including The Seven Year Itch and Some Like It Hot. Monroe died of an overdose in 1962 at the age of 36, but her legacy as a Hollywood icon continues to this day. Icon, blonde bombshell, Marilyn Monroe was many things. But above all else, she was a style icon. Marilyn Monroe was known for her signature look, a white dress and red lipstick. She was also known for her blonde hair, which she often wore in loose curls or flowing waves. Marilyn Monroe exuded femininity 
and sexuality, and her unique style helped to set her apart from other Hollywood actresses of the time. Today, Marilyn Monroe is still considered to be one of the most stylish women of all time, and her influence can still be seen in fashion and beauty trends today. Marilyn's hair eventually lost all of its color and became a stunning platinum blonde, or in Marilyn's word, pillowcase white as she put it. Barnhart may have been the hairstylist who gave Monroe her blonde hair, but she wasn't Marilyn Monroe's sole hairdresser. Later, when Monroe was a legitimate celebrity, she would collaborate with a changing cast of hairdressers, including Pearl Porterfield, Jean Harlow's own Hollywood hairdresser, Gladys Rasmussen, and Kenneth Battelle. According to author Pamela Keogh, Monroe's stylists used peroxide and bleach highlights every three weeks for the rest of her life. Rasmussen previously noted in an interview, there are various issues in doing Marilyn's hair. It's very very fine and consequently hard to manage. My own special mixture of sparkling silver bleach plus 20 volume peroxide and a secret formula of silver platinum rinse to take the yellow out is how we got her shade of platinum, he once said. Johnson's baby powder, the original dry shampoo, was reported to have been used by Monroe to reduce the number of washes she required to cover up her dark hair regrowth. Hollywood was ruled by Monroe and her pillowcase white blonde hair. She attracted unparalleled levels of public attention all around the world with her roles in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, How to Marry a Millionaire, and There's No Business Like Show Business, to name a few. A lot of Marilyn Monroe's personal belongings and cosmetics were sold at auction when Marilyn passed away. There are images of the cosmetics she was using at the time of her passing. She did own a few boxes of Wella's Cholesterol Cream tubes, and there were still a few hairs stuck in the hair curlers. Marilyn had very damaged, bleach damaged hair that was fragile. Cholesterol was created to treat Marilyn's hair. And there are also a few vintage beauty hacks that a lot of people use back in the day with baby powder. The first one is obviously using it as a dry shampoo. Apply a little baby powder to your roots to quickly absorb extra grease and oil, and then brush out your hair to mix it in with the rest of your hair. Instead of applying powder straight from the bottle to your hair, sprinkle it onto your fingers first for a better control over the quantity you apply. Baby powder was also used to prolong your lipstick. Using baby powder between applications of lipsticks would help the color last all day. Before using a brush to apply the baby powder, people would unfold a tissue to make it thin as possible, holding over the lips after you apply a lipstick. People also use baby powder to make their eyelashes longer. Women would coat their lashes with mascara. Then while the initial layer is still wet, they would use a cotton swab or a disposable mascara wand and dust baby powder over their lashes. This would help them to lengthen and volumize them. And then to cover the powder, women would apply a second layer of mascara. And back in the day when women started waxing, they also used baby powder to absorb excess moisture and it really helped make the waxes go a lot smoother. And women also used it to eliminate extra shine on their oily T-zone. It was an alternative to using a face powder. They would use baby powder on their face. Dr. Frederick B. Clymer served as Johnson & Johnson's first director of scientific affairs, and he created Johnson's baby powder. He received a letter from a doctor in 1892 reporting that the patient had experienced skin rashes after applying a medical plasters. Kilmer sent a can of fragrant Italian talcum powder to the doctor and advised them to use it to lessen the itch. 1894 saw the release of baby powder, which first appeared in 1893. The first container of baby powder had the words for toilet and nursery on it, and it was yellow and red. In a box that was initially provided to midwives and mothers after childbirth, the talc was packaged in 1893. Because the mothers enjoyed it so much, the business began to offer it in pharmacies. The midwife's kit also contained 12 sanitary towels. Such a product was not previously offered for sale. The company began to manufacture these products after receiving hundreds of letters from women 
asking where they could purchase them, becoming the first company to do so in the United States. Mary Lee Johnson Richards, the granddaughter of Robert Wood Johnson I, was the first infant to be featured on the Johnson's baby powder label, the co-founder of Johnson & Johnson. For many Americans, the perfume of Johnson's infant powder is similar to the scent of a newborn baby. Fred Towell, a spokesperson for Johnson & Johnson, claimed that the baby powder scented cleaning products almost exclusively appeared in diapers and cosmetics. Johnson's baby powder is a familiar staple in many homes, and for good reason. It's gentle, soft, and has a pleasing scent. However, what many people don't know is that Johnson's baby powder is toxic and can be harmful to your health. Women have been instructed to use talcum powder as part of their feminine hygiene routine for many decades. By telling them we need a sprinkle a day to feel sexy and smell good, advertising has helped to maintain this misconception. But medical professions argue that women shouldn't use talc in this way and caution that doing so may increase your risk of developing cancer. Before June 2018, Gail Ingham reflected on her three three decades of Johnson's baby powder use in a courtroom in St. Louis. The 73-year-old St. Louis native testified to the jury that she began utilizing the well-known lotion powder in 1957 when she turned 13 years old in order to stay dry and fresh. Back then, I saw a woman on TV urging viewers to use a small bottle of Johnson & Johnson powder for everyday cleanliness, Inham stated. That's where I saw it, and that's what gave me the notion to use it. When she was told she had ovarian cancer in 1985, she stopped using baby powder on herself. At the time, she was unaware that there might be a connection between the two. She was only, according to her doctor's instructions, to refrain from using anything on her body without his approval. But after a six-week trial in the summer of 2018, a jury found Johnson's baby powder and other talc-based goods contained the cancer-causing material asbestos and were to blame for the ovarian cancer that affected Ingham and 21 other women. They received $4.69 billion from the jury. The landmark talc decision made headlines around the world and sparked discussion about the debate surrounding talcum powder, which some research has connected to ovarian cancer and mesothelioma. Millions of women use unnecessary and potentially hazardous items on their bodies bodies as a result of ingrained myths about feminine hygiene and businesses like Johnson & Johnson have benefited from the situation by spreading those falsehoods. The majority of women are accustomed to talcum powder's pleasant aroma and velvety texture. For hundreds of millions of newborns and kids, Johnson's baby powder has been synonymous with bath time ever since it was first introduced in the late 1800s and I'm pretty sure my mom probably used Johnson's baby powder on me when I was a kid. However, puberty can also bring on a new connection with talcum powder for certain women, one that is frequently motivated by fear and shame. It's a shame that we bleed every month and they also have a fear of smelling. Stephanie Martin, who was diagnosed with ovarian cancer at the age of 42, told a jury, Honestly, I don't remember a period not using it. However, I do recall in sixth grade when you start your period and you're just so anxious that they'll know I'm on my period, so you use a lot of baby powder because you want to keep fresh and South Carolina is extremely hot. When Johnson & Johnson and other businesses aggressively advertise their talc products as a solution to a problem created by societal norms, they did so by capitalizing on these kinds of concerns and and insecurities. Talc will absorb any moisture from your body and cover up any offensive scents, they assured customers. Years of promotion claim that using feminine hygiene products would not only keep you clean and fresh, but would also boost your self-esteem at work 
or make you more appealing to people of the opposite sex. Never mind that the female body is an excellent self-cleaning organ on its own. It doesn't actually require a sprinkle a day. As normal a grooming practice for many women as brushing one's teeth or using deodorants is dusting their bodies with baby powder. And I think this was definitely a vintage beauty technique. It's not so common today. Martin described in detail to the St. Louis jury how she would sprinkle the powder on her hands, massage it under her arms, under her breasts, in her bra, and other areas of her body. She did this while making emotions with her hands as if she were shaking an unseen bottle. Then a 46 year old South Carolina woman testified, I put my underwear to my thighs and dusted it in there, but I didn't want it clumpy. So I sort of shake it into my underwear. She says many of us picked up this practice from our moms who in turn picked it up from their mothers. And we never really questioned it until recently before some scientists discovered that women would use a powder as a feminine hygiene product had a higher risk of ovarian cancer until Johnson & Johnson was sued by women who had ovarian cancer after using talcum powder. Johnson & Johnson's baby powder product line has brought in hundreds of millions of dollars for the consumer goods and pharmaceutical behemoth thanks to its clever marketing. The company's well-known baby powder is described as a $70 million business business in the United States alone from an internal email in 2008. According to another internal email, Johnson's baby powder also served as the company's holy cow in addition to being a cash cow. Indeed, Johnson & Johnson's image and reputation as a caring corporation and brand that mothers and families could rely on were solidified through the years by the iconic baby powder. However, a lot of customers regret now that they were unaware of the potential connection between talcum powder and ovarian cancer, including the women who participated in the St. Louis talc trials. And many people were horrified to learn from a shocking investigation that Johnson & Johnson had known for years that its talcum powder could occasionally contain asbestos, but refused to alert authorities or warn the public. They were just making too much money and they didn't want to risk it. Definitely kind of reminds me of Aaron Brockovich a little bit. The investigation's findings were supported by memoranda and other records uncovered during a recent talc lawsuit. According to laboratory studies from 1957 and 1958, Johnson & Johnson's Italian supplier's talc was tainted with asbestos. From 1971 until 2003, Johnson & Johnson's raw talc and powders occasionally tested positive for trace levels of asbestos. Johnson & Johnson pushed the US Food and Drug Administration to adopt a talc testing method in the early 1970s that would have permitted it to contain up to 1% asbestos, which was 10 times the permissible level the FDA had suggested. Johnson & Johnson encouraged an industry organization to conduct its own self-policing after the watchdog body rejected the plan. Asbestos levels in cosmetic talc are still unregulated by the FDA today, and the industry maintains its own standards. Many reports have been refuted by Johnson & Johnson as being one-sided, misleading, and provocative. The business stands by its claims that the talc in its products are absolutely harmless and do not contribute to cancer. On its Facts About Talc website, Johnson & Johnson claims that decades of independent scientific testing have proven that their products are safe and not contaminated with asbestos. Talc wouldn't be on the shelves if we thought it was hazardous. And I'm pretty sure they're lying because they pulled all the ones with talc in Canada and the United States. However, the business revealed in a Securities and Exchange Commission filing from February 2019 that the Justice Department and the S. EC had opened investigations into the situation and have subpoenaed papers from the Massive Consumer Goods Corporation. Medical professionals continue to maintain that talcum powder is not necessary for a woman's hygiene and health. Sandra Cesario, a professor in the College of Nursing at Texas Women's University, told Drug Watch that women worry about odor 
or they worry about dampness or they worry about those kinds of things. So they're trying to clean themselves up and cover things up, which aren't necessary. The greatest approach to avoid all types of diseases and other problems is simply to wash your hands with soap and water and keep yourself clean. People seem to remember Johnson and Johnson's shower to shower ads with their catchy tune the most out of all the other companies' talcum powder advertisements. In one shower to shower ad from 1974, a young woman and a fortune teller sit together and gaze into a crystal ball. The fortune teller looks into the crystal ball and declares, I see a nude lady. And she sees a young woman singing, a sprinkle day keeps the stench away. The girl replies, that's me, except I don't sprinkle. The fortune teller places her hands on her temples. I know, I know. The crystal ball of the fortune teller then shows a male. The girl inquires, how do I meet him? In response, the fortune teller says, sprinkle, sprinkle. The sprinkled a day commercial appeared in numerous iterations, but the key takeaway was always the same. Use shower to shower every day to keep dry and fresh and succeed socially. And there's so many commercials from the 70s featuring this product and baby powder targeted for young women. And a lot of people who were young in the 1970s still remember a lot of these ads, even today. Karen Hawk says, Do I recall any advertisements in particular? Not really, but I do recall hearing that jingle. And then she says this during her testimony in court in June 2018. Using Johnson's baby powder daily, often more than once a day, the 67-year-old ovarian cancer survivor recounted. She applied it to her kids, just like many other mothers before her. Hawk became emotional while listening to her attorney perform the jingle in court. She wiped her eyes with a tissue as she answered, Yes, yes, I do remember it. Another plaintiff in the 2018 St. Louis trial, Carol Williams, received her ovarian cancer diagnosis in 2011. She also remembers this commercial and catchy tune. I recognize that one because I heard, I'm getting my sprinkling today every morning. Just a preconceived notion that they planted in your mind with that advertisement. On the witness stand, she recalled a cute a little song. Williams, who was 63 at the time of her testimony, claimed that she had been taught to use baby powder as part of her regular cleanliness practice since she was just a little girl. She says, we were always instructed to use our powder from the time she was old enough to take a bath by herself. I'm unsure if my brothers used it, but my sister and I used it every day. The first people to suggest a connection between talcum powder and ovarian cancer were a group of Welsh physicians. The doctors found talc particles lodged deeply in the tumors of women with ovarian and cervical cancer in 1971. Based solely on their findings, the authors acknowledged that it was difficult to indicate talc as a root of women's cancer. However, they suggested that talc might be connected to other elements that contribute to the development of cancer and recommended more research. Although the study's authors hoped it would spur additional study on the subject, it also launched a controversial discussion about the safety of cosmetic talc that has lasted for almost 50 years. Another theory is that when a talcum powder is extracted from the dirt, asbestos is unintentionally included into the product. Mesothelioma, a fatal cancer that mostly attacks the linings of the chest and abdomen, is mostly brought on by asbestos, a known carcinogen. Some people think it could act as a catalyst for ovarian cancer. According to certain reliable research conducted on animals, talc does cause inflammatory lesions on the female tract and it does cause papillary development on the ovary, quite similar to those generated by asbestos put into a pelvic cavity. As medical devices, tampons, and menstrual pads are subject to FDA regulation, however, many other feminine hygiene products, including talcum powder, are not directly under the FDA's review. In 2009 and 2010, the FDA attempted to undertake its own investigation into the safety of talc, but its efforts were unsuccessful. Only four out of nine talc vendors gave samples of their unprocessed talc to the FDA. The FDA also evaluated 34 different cosmetics goods that were acquired from the retail outlets in Washington, D.C., in addition to those four samples. Despite stating that the results were limited, 
The FDA did not discover asbestos in the samples it examined. The FDA stated that the studies do not prove that most of all or talc containing cosmetic items now sold in the United States are likely to be free from asbestos contamination. In Marilyn Monroe's day, Johnson's baby powder was touted as a versatile product that could be used for everything from keeping skin soft to prevent chafing. However, the reality is that talc, the main ingredient in Johnson's baby powder, can actually be quite harmful. Studies have shown that talc can increase the risk of ovarian cancer and other health problems. As a result, Johnson's baby powder is no longer the innocent product it once was. Today, it carries with it the potential for serious health risks. Marilyn Monroe may have been one of its most famous fans, but Johnson's baby powder is no longer something to be taken lightly. Johnson's baby powder has been a household staple for over a hundred years, but recent lawsuits have brought to light the potential health risks associated with its use. Johnson & Johnson has long insisted that their products are safe, but documents uncovered in recent litigation suggest otherwise. Johnson & Johnson knew about the cancer-causing asbestos in their powder as early as 1971, but chose to keep this information hidden from the public. As a result, thousands of women have been diagnosed with ovarian cancer after using Johnson's baby powder for decades. Johnson & Johnson has attempted to downplay the significance of these lawsuits, but the evidence is mounting against them. It is time for the truth to be revealed and for Johnson & Johnson to be held accountable for their lies. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys again soon. And don't forget to check out some of my other vintage Maryland videos. All right, bye.